to be the man. You got to beat the man. This is my yard now. I will fight anyone and everyone. Here he comes. Where is he? Cactus Jack. Your arms are just too short to box with God. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Few True Heels podcast. My name is Jacob Best in the Realm Hotter. I am Brian Prime Man Peacock. And today we have a news e show. Kind of. Um, we finally did one of the things that we've been planning on doing, and I, I made you, you willingly did it. We'll watch the uh, CM Punk versus John Cena 2011 Money in the Bank match. Yeah, yeah I'm glad I watched that. We are going to talk about Bubba Ray retiring. Uh, we're going to talk about some re- recent releases from WWE. And uh, the Bullet Club took a kind of special selfie. Yeah. At uh, World of the Worlds, yeah. right? Even though we're, we're a little behind on that. But I think we're also we're behind on the Bubba Ray thing. Yeah, it was the same night. Well, last week was um, Hell in a Cell. Not Hell in a Cell. Nope. Uh, the one from TLC. last week. TLC, thank you. Go back and listen and watch that one. Listen and watch that one. It is on YouTube. There's no video. It's just audio. Well, you still watch it. You still watch it. Stream, Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I think let's start with the releases because I feel like that's the least interesting thing. Yeah. Um, speaking of the least interesting, Darren Ray. Darren Ray. Darren Young and Summer Ray have been released. I <laughs> don't even them. know who they are. You know who Darren Young is? No. Oh, he's really good. Mr. No Days Off. He was in a Apparently tag team. Apparently he's going to have a lot of days off. <laughs> he's, he's already had a lot of days <laughs> off. He hasn't been on Raw in forever. He was a tag team with Titus O'Neil. They were something. They were something, huh? <laughs> they, they had a neat thing where they put their arms around each other and went, millions of dollars, millions of dollars, millions of dollars. That, that was their thing. Primetime uh, players. I think I know who that is. Darren Young's really good. Okay. Hopefully he goes well, he to the was. indie. He, pff, I mean, you, you've seen it. Guys go to the indies and get a million times better. Yeah. Or at least they're allowed to be a million times better. Yeah, that's true, too. I can't wait to see him. I'm actually looking forward to this. I'm glad he got released. Staying in our, stating it right now. Good yeah. luck, Darren. Oh, uh, hopefully. I know you mean. listen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He got fired, so he doesn't listen anymore. Yeah, maybe. Um, and Summer Rae, I mean, she was part of Total Divas. Which I have never seen an episode of. It's like me and Kim's guilty pleasure. Oh, I like seeing God. Daniel Bryan. I don't think I'd ever watch it. I you wouldn't like it. Bryan. I love Daniel Bryan. <laughs> you wouldn't like it. I've been a Brian Danielson, Daniel Bryan fan since right. early 05. But He's really funny. <laughs> like, and, and, I mean, that's obvious from his stuff in ROH. Yeah. And, yeah. He is great on that show. But yeah, I would still never watch that show. The other news is Emma was released. Which didn't surprise you. No. Not at all. But, I mean, she's been on TV. She just had a big match with Asuka. So I don't understand why they did this. I'm going to put air quotes around that big thing. I mean, I mean it, was it was Asuka's... Big for her. Yeah. But... Alright, I mean, so I just... I just met a wrestling fan over the weekend and even they were like why did Asuka debut against Emma that didn't make any sense I don't know yeah like she was so confused and she didn't even she didn't watch NXT so it was her first time seeing Asuka right so she was just like I've heard about her but why did she debut against Emma that didn't make any sense so and I agree yeah I I think we talked about it last week I think it's part of and obviously, I'd be wrong about this, because this is what I thought before. It's part of making Emma one of the main combat, you know, wrestlers. Yeah, I don't think that's happening now. I thought it was. <laughs> it's supposedly been happening for a long time. She's great. She was one of the best parts of NXT. What? Yeah. Old school Emma was the best. Popping bubbles? No. That's yes. Not, no. She <laughs> was I refuse. a face and a heel at the same time. Like Just by being friends. adorable. No. <laughs> right. And apparently Leo Rush tweeted, uh, I guess there are things that happen when you're not truly ready for Asuka. <laughs> oh, come on. That's funny. Uh, he later deleted it. Yeah, because someone gave him... and He apologized, though. Yeah, he said he respects Emma. He would never mock somebody for losing their job and wishes her good luck. Uh, yeah. It was a funny joke. Yeah, no, it really was. I hate when people apologize. I'm always curious, like, I wonder what Emma thought of that. Oh, she's probably mad as hell. That he said that? Or in general, I'm, 
If I lost my job, I'd be mad as well. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but it's so different in wrestling, though. Because it's like, yeah, I lost my job, but PWG just called. (laughs) Yeah, they're not going to pay quite as much, though. Oh, I don't know. The Bucks? Young Bucks make a ton of money? Yeah, you're right. But I also think the Bucks are getting another paycheck from somewhere else as well. So What are you saying? Same thing I've been saying. (laughs) (laughs) Go back and listen to those podcasts. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I. <laughs> it's a merch check. <laughs> yeah, but the indies are healthier than they ever have been. That's a fact. There are a lot of guys making a living right now in the indie scene. Yes. We even know one that's doing pretty well. He's doing all right. Staying busy. Staying busy. Staying, staying busy. busy and making a living are two completely different things. That's true. I'm staying busy. I can't make a living. <laughs> I stayed busy every day, every hour of the day, and I was not making a living. I wasn't making anything. Fair enough. I was literally just making a roof over my head. Yeah. That's that's a topic for the other podcast. Um, that should definitely be on this one. The wrestling podcast? Yeah. Making livings? Oh, you're talking about the wrestling thing? Yeah, I was okay. talking about when I was wrestling. I was literally keeping a roof over my head. That's all I was doing. Yeah, just keeping that place open. Yeah. Wait, have we gone in, in depth about WWW? I don't know. We all, no, we didn't, because we need Lance. Yeah, we should get a couple guys in here. And yeah? Yeah. That would be good. That would be interesting. Yeah, uh, that would be very good. I'm just saying, who can't we have in here together? <laughs> Mo. Mo. <laughs> nope, I take that back. We need Mo. I can't even say the thing. I can't I even can say get him. his favorite tagline. I don't feel comfortable saying it on the podcast. I don't know that I know it. <laughs> oh, I'll have to tell you off the air because I'm not going to say it on the show. Just um, Google Mighty Mo because that's what we were told to do and never found anything. Um, Mighty Molly. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, speaking of people retiring, but I am just glad. I, I am glad he did have at least one good trainer come through there. Who? Jeremy. Not Brooks. I don't even think you worked with him. But I worked with No, him I worked lot. with you and Lance. Yeah. And Keith. Yeah. Keith somewhat, because he was so tiny. Yeah. <laughs> it was very hard to work. He was a good training dummy. That is the one guy I wish would have stuck with it, because he was great. Him and the, the other guy were good, too. He was okay. And if he's listening... I guess Rose Tinted okay. Glasses, he was good. Yeah. Yeah, but Keith was legit. Good. Oh, sure. I mean, if he would have stuck with it... We'd be seeing free fall <laughs> somewhere. Was that his name? Yeah. God, I Lynette. forgot everyone's names. Le- oh, we need Lynette on the show. Mile an hour south, south we need Lynette on the show. That would be great. Yeah. Lynette and Brooks. Lynette, Brooks, Or are those Lance. two people we can't have at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Bring in uh, Lynette, uh, Brooks, which is funny because that is her name. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> and then uh, Lance and then us two. That would be great. Uh, I wish I could get a hold of Danny. I, he's on my Facebook. I don't know where he lives. I don't think he lives here. I don't know. Um, we need to do a WWW reunion and a, a 8-Bit Bastards reunion. Let's not get the guy who had the fake dreads. Matt? Yes. Should we be naming? Well, I guess we're not naming last names. <laughs> I, know, I don't think I ever knew his last name. Yeah, I don't know. I just know I ripped his dreads out. Yeah. Because I didn't know they were fake. <laughs> yeah, they sure were. I will never forget giving him a bulldog, Probably. I think. Yeah, I think I grabbed him by the hair to pull him into a bulldog, and then, like, I had stuff in my hand, and it was kind of like, whatever, I didn't know what it was. And looking on the ground, and there's all these little black things, all these little, like, spurs almost. <laughs> Yeah. It was like, and there was what? His, his fake <laughs> And reds. rubber bands. Yeah. That was awkward. Yep. Lance was outside the ring laughing. Yeah. <laughs> he must have seen the whole thing. He must have seen me pull him out. That's that must have hurt, too. Anyway, back to releases and all that. Yeah, that that's about it for releases. Okay. So just random releases. Some somewhat surprising. Summer Ray and Emma are surprising to me. Yeah. I'm not surprised. It's just weird when they release somebody that's actively on TV. Who just did a pay-per-view? Yeah. I'm I'm not surprised. And Paige still has a job. What the hell? That, 
I am confused about that. That pisses me off. But there's plenty more we don't know about. So. I mean, even if you don't like Emma, she is a good worker. Paige is not. No. <laughs> <laughs> She's not. All right, whatever. Enough trash talking, Emma, from you. We also got Bubba Ray retired at War of the Worlds. Yeah, for anyone who didn't know. Go watch that. That was, man. That was good. That, that was heart-wrenching. Yeah. I've watched that guy forever. Yeah? Like, I, I have to tell my brother about that because I, I don't... When we used to watch wrestling, it was the Hardy Boys, Edge and Christian, and, and, and the Dudleys. Yeah. Those, they were the best. We loved the Dudleys. We had camo stuff. Right. And, and ah, God, when the Dudleys came back, it was kind of lackluster... But it'll still cool. Right. Much in the same way as like when Jericho comes back, it's kinda nothing crazy, but it's cool. I'm glad they got one last WWE run. When was that? Not too long ago. I kinda remember it. It was there nothing crazy happened. Like I don't think they won the belts or anything. Maybe they did. Then like this time, like the Hardys, the WrestleMania return was very cool. Yeah. Nothing crazy's happened yet. There's a lot of potential there. Yeah, hasn't that kind of dropped off? A little bit, but I think maybe when we get closer to WrestleMania, something's going to happen. They're going to start Undertakering it. What? What? <laughs> what does that mean? Just wrestle every, like, like two times a year. Those guys still wrestle. Do they, they still have weekly matches? I don't know. I, don't, I stopped watching the weekly They have show. at least almost weekly matches. I know they have matches at house shows. Oh, then never mind. Yeah, they're, they're working. I don't watch the show. Um, I kind of do. But uh, the Hardy, yeah, the Hardys have a lot of potential. Edge is done. Christian, I love Christian, but he's never caught on in WWE like he should have. No. I mean, it's so was, good, though. I think he did better in TNA. He did. That's Christian Cage. Absolutely. Which is sad. He did great in WWE, though. He, he had a fantastic feud with Randy Orton. Just one more match. <laughs> did you ever see that? No. That was the whole theme of that feud was just one more match. And then they st- the, and the whole company stuck with that. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I knew there wasn't something right about him. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Bubba's retired. He had a very nice speech. He gave a chunk of a table to a kid. To that kid. To that kid. Wrestling crowds are the best. Ring of Honor crowds are the best. NXT crowds are also pretty great. Though I've, I've because they're Ring of Honor fans. Yeah, but I people have told me that NXT crowds are the worst because of their chance. I think they're fun. No, it's fun. Yeah, they're well, the fourth guy in the ring. They're well, no. Okay, this is what I'll say. That best crowds are wrestling. Night after WrestleMania, and then PWG crowds, <laughs> and then it's a tie between ROH and NXT. Oh no, no. ROH is bigger. Yeah. yeah, yeah. ROH and then NXT. Because I've been, I haven't been to a uh, PWG show because we live on the East Coast, but I've been to Ring of Honor shows. That is intense. I've list. Uh, TNA FIP. crowds. I don't know, I've never been to a TNA show. I have. It was me. <laughs> it was you. <laughs> Which is dumb for us not to go to TNA shows. Well, they don't really do it around here. I don't know that I want to. <laughs> that one I went to was so bad. What are they called this week? What? Oh, what? Global Force Wrestling? Have they totally dropped the TNA? I, I don't know. I don't know either. I totally forgot my shtick. Didn't so, they? Hold on. Hold on. Total Nonstop Action Impact Wrestling presented by Global Force Wrestling. Fuck that owl. <laughs> Anthem was supposed to be in there. Oh, somewhere. presented by Anthem. That's what it was. Fuck that owl. <laughs> Indeed. Oh uh, yeah, they're they're dead now, right? I don't know. I can't. I want to declare them dead on this podcast. I'm so looking forward to that. I've seen pictures of their shows, and they're in like people's garages. <laughs> And there's, like, nobody there. But also, I want to point out that I see a lot of pictures from uh, WWE shows. House shows, yeah. And not just house shows, like, Smackdowns and stuff, where they show, like, half the arena is empty. Right. 
I just want to point out that that's the hard cam side, guys. They don't fill all those seats on that side. Really? I'll have to take a look at those pictures again. Yeah, it's always the, the side with the camera. Huh. They, okay. Because they put everybody on the other side. Sure. Like, I, like they, I've mentioned at other shows we've been to. Yeah. So you get your move. And then they don't. They probably don't want a lot of people in front of their cameras, standing up, walking in front of it. They also make way more money from their TV deals. <laughs> yeah. Well, and yeah, WWE is going to have... And, like... It seems like there is one of those articles come out every once in a while. I see all the time. But... And I feel like it's always when they go to, like, a small Earth city. Right. And it's like, yeah, it happens. Yeah. It, it, so when they you're... don't sell out every show. No, <laughs> not nearly. And tickets are too expensive. Yeah. Like, I've I... got zero interest in going to a live show. I want to go... I wanted my max is like seventy bucks. I would go to. I don't know if I would. No, I would. Yeah, I don't know. We're so spoiled by NXT now. I mean, that's what we need to go to is an Orlando NXT show, which I have. Really? Not a taping. Oh, but I've been to Orlando NXT. It's good. Did you go to Full Sail? No, no, it wasn't. That's why we need to go to Full Sail. Yeah. But they film on, like, Wednesdays. They do. They film the same day that... Or they fill up the same day that they, uh... They film... No, And then no, they fill they don't. up on their tickets. They don't. Oh, that's what I've heard. I know... I have contacts. I know. Uh, we need really. to use the contacts. No, but they're always like, hey, tickets are on sale. You guys want to go? It's like, no, because it's a Wednesday. I have to work in the morning. I have contacts. I tweeted with, um... Uh, View from the Cheap Seats guy once, Kyle... <laughs> I've watched a lot of his videos recently, by the Have way. Have you? Yeah. He's great. Yeah. And I I thought I saw him at uh, Hallow Scream the other day. Maybe you might be in one of his videos. No, he, I don't think we could have recorded where we were. But I was like, he oh, records sure a lot. him. Oh, were you in a house or something? We were in a show. Oh, okay. I mean, we recorded a lot, but yeah, yeah. I don't know. They he's didn't he's like him. legit recording stuff, though. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't think it was him, but I thought it was for a second. He seems like a nice guy. Mm-hmm. We should get him on the show sometime. Does he do wrestling stuff? Uh, yeah. He's a wrestling fan. Uh, sure. He could also be on the Future Villains podcast. Yeah, that's always a thing. Or both. Or both. So hit us up. Be from the Cheap Seats guy. Uh, yeah. I'm sure you listen to us. I'll do. I'll say we're I just assume about everyone him. listens to us. You should. That's how you do it. Uh, speaking of nothing related to Survivor Series... Okay, yeah, because... <laughs> sure. um, Survivor Series is shaping up to be pretty interesting. Uh, yeah. I'm super excited. That moment, like, I guess, you know, there was a whole lot of stuff going on when we were trying to watch Eclipse earlier, but when Shane walks up to Kurt and he just says to him, Under Siege, that was pretty cool. Yeah, and that's cool because I liked... Like a long time ago, when they did the Raw vs. SmackDown thing. Mm-hmm. That was pretty cool. Yeah. And thank God they're doing it, man. Because it's like, why else? It's the brand split. This stuff needs to happen. Right. It's what's best for business, you could say. And uh, and then doing stuff like this. I mean, Survivor Series is built for it. Right, yeah. I don't know how they're going to handle Royal Rumble. Like, are we going to get two Rumbles? Suppose we're going to get two one women's, one men's. That'd be cool. Does that mean we're going to get three? I doubt it. Or four, even? Four? No, there's not enough women <laughs> on each show. Uh, oh, okay. Two, one, no, two. you're right. You're right, though. Yeah. It would have to be Which four. Which drives me crazy, because it doesn't need to be that way, but... Yeah, I just want... Well, I guess, like, if you if you win and you're a Raw guy, then you just get the Raw... Isn't that what they did last time? I think. I because the and then the, they did elimination chamber right after that, and then they got a title shot from that. Then because the rumble is where they bring in all the like they'll have like hacks on Jim Duggan yes. come down. And that's why I like it. The Royal Rumble is so much fun. We're not talking about the Rumble right now, though. We're talking about Survivor Series. When is that, by the way? Uh, January. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's not too far. January ish. I just want to see who's number thirty again. Yes, that is a very exciting moment. Number one and number 30. Either very exciting or very just... 
<laughs> Ultimately <laughs> disappointing. Damn it. <laughs> was this last year? Freaking Roman Reigns. Uh, but, um, so yeah, we're going to get Raw versus SmackDown. Men and women's. Very cool. That women's match, I bet you, is going to be great. Yeah. It should I, better be. I hope it's better than the men's match. It has the potential to be. Definitely. And then, not to mention, we're, we're getting Brock Lesnar and Jinder Mahal, which I'm excited for. Yeah, like I said last week, Jinder was just like, I would like to be beaten by Brock <laughs> Lesnar, please. So I am here to declare that I would like to be defeated by Brock Lesnar. <laughs> sure, guy, we can let that happen. And I just want to say that I wish someone believed in me as much as Paul Heyman believes in Brock Lesnar. <laughs> Where the Singh brothers believe in Jinder Mahal? No. <laughs> I need someone like Paul <laughs> Heyman behind me. I don't know. The Singh brothers make things happen. I feel like I would rather have that. Yeah. I just need the moral support. Okay. I can make things happen myself. I just need, I just fair, need fair someone enough. behind me All pushing right. me. Uh, and then the night before, we're going to get NXT TakeOver War Games. That's going to be kind of kind of cool. Yeah. Um, but they just announced something that they're gonna do. Um, Tony Schiavone is gonna be there. The old WCW commentator. Oh man, I don't know. My brain just blinked. Does he? I do not know who that is. He was a big part of War Games. See Tony. Yeah, I don't. Oh, I don't Shit, remember let's... War Games. I have gone back and I know. Like I used to go to my uncle's house and watch. WCW pay-per-views. Uh, and that was one I remember watching. No, I don't think I ever saw it. Yeah, he's a, he's a commentator. Has been for... So now there's, there's two rings. Either. Yes. Now are the two rings in a cage? Sometimes. Sometimes. Not always. Looking at the graphic for it, they have a cage back That's true. For this it, one so. probably will be. So double ring, double cage... <laughs> The only thing I know, even close to that, is from Ready to Rumble where they had three cages on top of each other. <laughs> that, why has that ha match actually happened? What's that? Why hasn't that match actually happened? I thought it did. Has it? I saw it in the movie. David Arquette won I the mean, championship. Considering wrestling is what it is, I guess that counts. I like how you said that. Wrestling is what it is. <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that counts. David Ark, yeah. I love that movie. It is one of my favorite movies. We yeah. gotta talk about wrestling movies in one of these podcasts. Because there's, there's Ready to Rumble. Spoiler, that's number one for me. That There's there's also um, Ready to Rumble. <laughs> um, there's Wrestlers vs. Zombies. Oh, we do need to watch that, because I haven't seen it. We should have watched it for this podcast. We should have. like the Halloween one. But I have been non-stop. You have. For the last, like, two weeks, so... Um, I've been I, I've been waiting a year to see Stranger Things too. Mm -hmm. I haven't even got to glance at it yet. Jeez. So. Apparently, uh, they're making a Stranger Things board game. <gasps> That's a subject for another podcast. Yes, but I'm excited. Um. Now yeah, that's all I can think about. What was I saying? <laughs> Stranger. Um. There's the wrestler. Actually, that yes. might be number one. Nah, ready to rumble still. I don't know. I'm thinking of that last scene. We, we, we need to... Randy the Ram. Yeah. No, it's a fantastic movie. I might cry, guys. That was, we need, we need it was, that. It's a very emotional movie. And there are... Very I mean, there's real. also, like, the Luchador or whatever that's on Netflix. That thing has Rey Mysterio Sr. in it. He's a serial killer. Is that what that's called? Because <laughs> I, I have it's it. called. I own that. Oh, really? It's on Netflix now. Oh. Well, I own the DVD. And, and then, yes, I mean, it's, it's Rey Mysterio Sr. Wrestling documentaries. Like, uh, uh, Beyond the Mat. Yes, Road Diaries. Oh, if, <laughs> if, we get in, if we get into all the documentaries, iSpots has so many. On the Road With. Yeah. Anything with Raven in it. Have you seen mind. the episode of Being the Elite with Colt in it? What? No. Yeah, they're like, what is this, Wrestling Road Diaries 3? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have, I have. I remember that now, yeah. Because wasn't there someone else in it, too? I think it was no. just them and Cole. Oh, well, they handed the 
the camera to Colt to record to uh, take a picture. That's what it was. And he's like, "Are you seriously handing me the camera?" <laughs> Uh, I love being the elite. I've been trying to catch... I'm going to watch all of it. Yeah? I've pretty much decided, like, I'm halfway through, I'm going to watch all of it. I don't have time to watch all of it, but I would love to. I, those guys are the best. They're like five-minute episodes, so... They're... Yeah. I it's know. doable. It's doable. I'm just saying, I don't have time. It's going to take me a long time. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm going to sit down and do it in the evening. i yeah. got other stuff to watch, play, all that kind of thing. For another podcast. Yeah. Um, but I am excited about Survivor Series. I'm excited about War Games. Um, we'll probably... I mean, we're definitely going to do a podcast on Survivor Series. We might not need to do it on War Games. Because that's going to be Adam Cole versus Drew McIntyre in the War Games. Uh, and yeah, yeah, that's going to be an important yeah. show. Yeah. That's going to um, be a historic show, really. I mean, yeah, kind of. Huh? For sure. Oh, no, no. And then the other thing from the War of the Worlds was uh, the Bullet Club being out there, hanging out, and they wanted to take a selfie. And no one had their phone in their tights. That was pretty funny. That was funny. It was like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> and no one would, and then, well, Marty had, like, shorts on. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, Kenny Omega, I mean, he, that he wasn't, had a space to keep it. <laughs> that, that wasn't, that wasn't his phone in there, I guess. <laughs> And uh, Jimmy Jacobs comes out of the crowd, takes a selfie with them. <laughs> Jimmy Jacobs, man. <laughs> Sorry for getting your ass fired. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> oh my god, we need we need to have like a conspiracy theory podcast episode. They're just this, but the conspiracy theory of the Bullet Club being WWE employees. Oh, I wholeheartedly agree. Like That's we can break that theory. down. Just like Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho hate each other. <laughs> right, yeah. That's a thing, sure. Yeah. Um But that that's totally worth watching. Look that up, that's on YouTube. Uh that is that's Jimmy Jacobs return to ROH then. Yeah. It's an interesting way to come back. Kinda, yeah. He needs Just to be, offer up a cell phone. Yeah. If he's not he needs to be a behind the scenes guy at the very least. I hope he becomes someone's manager. I was thinking Sammy Callahan. That would be cool. The yeah, new Age he, of the Fall. Yeah. I just want to see Age of the Fall back. I just want to see Jimmy Jacobs with another promo. Even as, what was his name? Uh, emo Zombie Fairy Princess or whatever. It was. That's how I first was, uh, was introduced to Jimmy Jacobs. Oh, God, really? Yeah. That's horrible. <laughs> I kind of hated him. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that, yeah. I think when I started watching ROH, he was the zombie fairy princess or whatever. Which was super weird. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I gave up on him then, honestly. Did you? Yeah. I was like, he's too far gone. I'm sorry. Yeah. We need Age of the Fall Jimmy Jacobs back. Yep, we need him, Delirious. We need uh, Tyler Black to get fired. We need Seth Rollins <laughs> to really get fired. We really don't. That's the one thing we really don't. No, I do. I think so. I don't think that'll ever happen now. I don't think it's no. possible. He'd have to, like, kill someone. Oh, I think I think they fire him. I don't really? think he's that big. Yeah. He's I not unfireable. I hope John Cena takes a picture with the Bullet Club. <laughs> At this point, <laughs> that's the kind of crap Cena does. That would be funny. <laughs> like, I would I would appreciate that. It wouldn't shock me. I'd be like, no, that makes sense. Way to go, Cena. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of John Cena... You finally watched John Cena versus CM Punk Money in the Bank 2011. Okay. Yeah, I did. Thoughts? Uh, it was a good match. But before before we get into it, though. Okay. Well, you got something? What you got? You Go wanted, ahead. We were either going to watch that. I mean, we chose that one by on time restraints. Yes. But it was either that or... Okada. Omega, yeah. Okada, two, yeah. There is no comparison. No, no, but there's still. But I, I just wanted. That is that was a six I, and I star said, match. Yes. Do you know what stars that one got? Dave Metzer. Yeah, he got six stars. He made it. He made up a six star just for that match. No, I'm talking about the John Cena match. I think he got five stars. Oh, yeah, maybe. Pretty sure it did. 
It was good though. It was good. I I enjoyed it. I, my I favorite said, thing. My favorite thing. Mm-hmm. Colt Commander in the front row. Yeah, which I didn't know. I don't know if I knew about Colt necessarily at that time when I was watching it. 2011? You may not have. That was like six years ago. Yeah. I don't know. I was definitely purely a WWE guy. And Uh, also probably TNA. That was probably when I was watching TNA as well. See, I haven't been a WWE, like, exclusive WWE fan. I don't think I ever have. As soon as I heard there was other wrestling, like, as a child. I was like, WCW? Yeah, all of it. I enjoyed it all. But then again, I also wasn't allowed to watch it. Right. So, <laughs> that's a whole other story. But, WWE was the only thing available to me. But I do love that that was, like you said, Cena's only heel match he's ever had. Yeah. I <laughs> like how pissed off he looked. The whole time. Now, I'm sure, I don't know, it was, it was very entertaining. Mm-hmm. It was uh, when Vince and uh, the other guy. Oh, John Laurinaitis. Yeah. And Cena laid the other guy out. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Like, that's not something I expected to happen. Yeah, that was pretty so. crazy, because Vince was trying to get the, the bell to ring. Yeah. That's what John was going down there to do, and Cena knocked him out. Yep. I thoroughly enjoyed that. <laughs> that Yeah, that's... Yeah, it's not up there with Okada. As far as WWE matches go... Yeah. That is one of the best of all time. Yeah, it was pretty good. Um, just the way they laid into each other too. Punk about knocked him out a couple times. Yeah, he got some stiff knees to the face. <laughs> some of those punches were pretty stiff. Yeah, and they were trading in the beginning Absolutely. on both their parts. And uh, after the match, I think you you were gonna go get up, and I was like, wait, wait. Yeah, because it really is some of the most iconic CM Punk images. Him holding the belt next to his face. Yeah. And then they try to get Alberto to come down, and Punk just knocks his lights out. That was an awesome kick. Oh, my God. Because that was very... I, I remember <sighs> that very vividly. Thinking of just that kick alone, I would love to see CM Punk versus Aleister Black. Yeah. I, I would see love to there's... see CM Punk versus Kevin Owens. I'm sure we can find that, though. Like, I'm well, sure that's happened. But, the, like, Punk would be in his prime, and Owens is in his prime right now. I would love to see Owens versus Seth Rollins. No, I mean, uh, Punk versus Seth Rollins, which I know I think has also happened. Oh, I'm sure. Um, Tyler Black? You know what hasn't happened? Punk versus Roman Reigns. You think Cena nobody, got booed? Nobody wants to see that. Cena got booed massively in that crowd. If you made it just as important and against Roman Reigns... In Chicago... Roman wins the day CM Punk comes back. (laughs) The fans would level that arena. They really would. I think that would be the first legit wrestling riot. I don't think it's ever really happened. I don't know they threatened to riot. Oh yeah. CM Punk versus Sami Zayn? The only thing that would make that more intense was if they were Philadelphia fans. (laughs) All right. Are they particularly... Yes. Yeah, no, I guess you're right, because yes. that is where ECW is. So, but yeah, I mean... They're kind of like Chicago fans. fans. <laughs> <laughs> They're radioactive. <laughs> I thought that was New Jersey. I don't know. It's one of them. I don't know. We also watched, uh, well, right after, not right after, sometime after, um, the his return to Raw. Yeah. Which, you know, he put like a picture of him of the belt in the fridge uh he took a bunch of pictures and i think like showed up the cons and stuff with it i remember the picture of it in the fridge it should have gone on longer that's one of those dream booking kind of things yeah. and i think it's been said that they wanted it to go on longer but man when he came back and his music's playing and cena's just like not my music i remember that as well just standing up and being so excited Oh yeah, on my feet. This is when I was. This was all happening when I was hating wrestling. That's unfortunate. I had such a bad. It's understandable though. It left such a bad taste in my mouth. I was so over wrestling at that time. I mean, here's the thing. I vividly remember that match. I vividly remember Punk coming back. I don't really remember what else was going on. Yeah. And Laurinaitis, the guy that got knocked out. Yeah. He was actually really good. Oh okay. That's he good. is 
And I, I'm gonna. Well, that's not good. But that means he was really good. Right. <laughs> he was legitimately the most aggravating freaking authority oh. figure. Yeah. I can see that. From just what little bit we saw. He had a weird voice, too. And I just was. I, I'm a huge CM Punk fan. I, and I regret not watching it while he was on. But. We can go back and watch some now. And we can. That was like the main. That and him coming back. I think he also had a great match with Alberto Del Rio. I want to say he had a good match with Orton. You keep saying that guy's good. Orton? No. Well, Orton too. Del Rio? Yeah. I, I like Del I used to like Del Rio. I haven't seen him do anything that impresses me whatsoever. I'm also rose tinted glasses. Because Del Rio was great in the context of when he was in WWE. Wait. What? Did we finish the World Cup? Uh, no. Why, why did you all of a sudden remember that? Because that was the last thing I really saw Del Rio in that I cared about. I don't know. We'll have to check into that. I don't think we finished the World Cup. <clears throat> yeah, we were going ham on that, too. Like, every podcast. <laughs> Sorry. Because it was interesting. Yeah, so we need to go back and watch it. But um, in the context of Cena, Orton, Del Rio, he's much better. Uh, maybe not better than Cena. But in that crop of guys at the time, Del Rio was really interesting and really good. Uh, so like now, you say Del Rio, like it, it's like a Kurt Angle thing to me. It just doesn't. doesn't but in the context of the World Cup, yeah, whatever. I don't really want to see him. Yeah, because there's so many other good wrestlers. Oh, yeah, there's definitely way better wrestlers, but at the time, he was very good in WWE. Like that one Canadian guy with no shoes. Matt Riddle? Nope. I don't know. I forget the guy's name. Uh, Speedball. Yes. Mike Bailey. Yes. Yes. He was really good. I was trying to think of a Canadian guy, but... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no shoes made me think of Matt Riddle. <laughs> Me too. I was even thinking Matt Riddle when I said it, but I was like, I was telling myself, I was like, no, that's not him. Speaking of Matt Riddle, we were just talking about investing in uh, Bola DVDs. Bola DVDs. We should, because that's the kind of stuff I'd rather talk about. I really would too. I don't care about Emma. I don't care about John Cena and Roman Reigns. I really don't care about Emma. Shit. I don't. I really don't. I'd much rather be watching Bola and, you know, Ring of Honor. And, but yeah. I do have to say, or, or NXT, because NXT makes me. Think of the other ones and makes me happy. <laughs> yeah. You gotta say what? Oh. Um, did I say that? You, you, I gotta say, and then you cut yourself off. Did I? That was gonna really go to another topic. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. Now we'll never know. No, I, I wanna save it till the end. Oh, okay. Hey, we're at the end. All right. Well, I do wanna say, um, congratulations. To two favorite wrestlers right now. Okay. Uh, I hate it when you bring up things I don't know, by the way. Oh, yeah. I don't think you know. You don't know about this. No. Uh, Ray Monroe. Okay. Of uh, War Machine. Of War Machine. Ray Monroe and uh, Sarah Logan uh-huh. are now engaged. Congratulations. Awesome. Guys. And it happened at, and I can't, it literally, I think it's the coolest thing where it happened. I was like, how did they do it and where did they do it? Because they're, they're interesting people. Let me, let me just show you the picture. They like their Viking culture. They were at a, a weekend long Viking reenactment. That's cool. Yeah. And, uh, they're part of the Swamp Vikings, I think they're called. That sounds terrifying. <laughs> um, I think I've talked about it before, but yeah, they uh, they do Viking reenactments on the weekends, and oh, I saw a speaking of these two, uh, Sarah Logan. I got a notification she was doing a live video on Instagram. Right, and I was like, oh, I'll check it out. And she was sitting there doing a she was making a leather glove, and uh, I got to ask her what she was listening to, and she replied to me. I I, I was right. I thought it, it was what I thought it was. Nice. That was pretty cool. So, uh, but yeah, congratulations, uh, Raymond Rowe. To, Row, to who, future women's champion, Sarah Logan. Yeah. And uh, future 
tag team champion on whatever damn show he wants to be on. Yeah. With uh, Imro. Man, War Machine versus Sanity. That would be intense. Honestly, War Machine versus the Ascension, if they let the Ascension do any damn thing. If the Ascension were what they need to be, yeah. Or <laughs> War Machine versus anybody. War Machine versus the Miz Taraj. Fuck off. See, I broke your concept. You did. Now I'm done. I give up. I quit. We're done. Thank you for listening to the podcast, guys. It's the Future Heels podcast. You can find it on iTunes. You can find it on YouTube. Not on SoundCloud anymore. Stop looking there for that. You can find it on our website, futurevillains.com. That's F-E-W-T-R-U-E-V-I-L-L-A-I-N-S.com. You can find me on Twitter at Matt Best in the Realm, on Facebook Best in the Realm Gaming, YouTube Best in the Realm, and twitch.tv slash Best in the Realm. Uh, on Twitter, I'm at Brian25, and on Instagram, Brian1138. Thank you for listening to episode 33, guys. Next one, we have like two or three weeks of no pay-per-views. What are we going to do? I don't know.